Lots of reaction today as Environment Minister Stephen Gilbo clarified a controversial mark he made earlier this week that the government would stop investing in new roads. Of course we're funding roads. We have, we have programs to fund roads. What we have said, and, and maybe I should have been more specific in, in the past, is that we, we don't have funds for large projects like the Troisième Lien that the CAC have, has been trying to do. The environment minister has once again demonstrated how tone deaf he is on anything to do with environmental issues. I would say that he's losing credibility every, every single day. I don't know why his caucus and cabinet are continuing to put up with it. These comments have obviously made a lot of us very nervous uh, that they're not going to be the partner for us on these infrastructure projects, and we really do need them at the table. Ontario Premier Doug Ford has also weighed in on social media, writing, I'm gobsmacked. A federal minister said they won't invest in new roads or highways. He doesn't care that you're stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. I do. We're building roads and highways with or without assent from the feds. All right, the power panel is back to talk about this. Sherelle Evelyn, Jordan Leichnitz, Tim Powers, and Amanda Alvaro. Uh, so, Amanda, the carbon rebranding re is going well uh, today. <laughs> Look, uh, Minister Gilbo has clarified that he's not talking about all roads, uh, but it took like three cracks at it because he said this in Montreal. Then he said, I mean, roads like this one. And then his office later called news and said, I mean, just this one. <laughs> and look, Ford and, and Smith, you get, but EB. Like, B.C. Premier Eby uh, is an ally in a lot of these things. Uh, wh wh where are they today with this? Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. okay. Well, from a communication standpoint, it is, as we know, it is never a good day when you have to clarify your remarks. It is never a good week when you have to clear your remarks over and over again. And this, in some ways, goes to message discipline. Know what you have to say, say what you're going to say, and then don't go beyond that. And I think, you know, listen, everyone is entitled uh, to make a mistake now and then, a communications error about how you're saying something. And he he certainly tried today to clarify that he wasn't talking about all roads. He was talking about, quote, unquote, large roads. I don't know if that appeases uh, the critics. Probably not. It certainly was an opportunity for the premiers, as we saw, uh, jumping in uh, to take their slice of this narrative pie. Um, and it was a good one for them to get in on. And it's very challenging for the government right now to be offside on messaging uh, when they're dealing with so many issues, but also to kind of hand it over to the conservative premiers, uh, Danielle Smith and Doug Ford, and give them you know, a reason to, to critique the remarks. I think that it's a big challenge for the government to have to deal with some of these communications errors at a time when they really shouldn't have to. Jordan, like, uh, you know, you see Doug Ford jump in on this, and we've talked many times on this show, the overlap between Ford Nation and, and the Liberal voters in yeah. Ontario and in the 905, and, you know, the clarifying, the clarifying, the clarifying, it's another attack ad uh, just handed well, to the Conservatives. Well, let me just say that there's nothing that Doug Ford and his team relish more than a fight with Stephen Gilbo. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this was, was like a little bow, you know, a gift with a bow on it that landed on Ford's desk, and they were quite delighted to open it. Um, look, there, there, there's no question that these kind of remarks are incredibly unhelpful to the government, incredibly unhelpful from this minister in particular. It's not the first time. And when you consider, as you mentioned before, that they are trying today, to the story of the day on the environment was supposed to be the rebrand of a carbon tax rebate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, not coincidentally, Gilbo there was nowhere to be seen. Seamus O'Regan, Minister O'Regan, was to the front for that. And, uh, and, and I think that they have really lost uh, a, a lot of the day on that story to these comments. So it's, it is absolutely the opposite of the kind of day you want to have when right. you're in government. So, so Gilbo was at that press conference. Uh, O'Regan and Goody Hutchinson people got it going. But then all the questions, Tim, were about the road comments, right? So they're trying to build this semantic lifeboat to save the carbon policy by, by rebranding it. And then the champion of that ends up undermining their ability to, to talk about it on a clean day. Yeah, before I answer that, Jerry, the director, can you play the theme from the Jetsons? Because I came in <laughs> on my hovercraft. I mean, look, this is just... St <laughs> Stephen Gibo is not a stupid person. He's a, And he's a good... In other places, <laughs> he has proven to be a good communicator. Part of me does wonder if he's in a m frame of mind where you know what, he may see the end of the road <laughs> that he's not going to pave uh, and is is looking at where he may go after this. One of the concerns you hear that Minister Guibault has had is that the community from which he's 
come from may not have the same degree of respect for him that they once had. So is he really losing? He's he's hurting the liberals. He's hurting the liberal brand um, because this is also the government that is spending billions of dollars to go after uh, battery manufacturers and critical mineral production. I think, David, the last time I checked, electric cars also travel on on the road. I mean, Guibault is is just making it so easy for the conservatives they don't almost have to show up to work and I yes I'm trying to be sarcastic but on a day like this when the minister himself is doing all the work for you in terms of no I didn't mean this no I mean this and it plays right into the brand again that it ties into the carbon tax it ties into the yeah. fact that the government's out of touch I mean as someone said earlier how much longer I think it was Daniel Smith can the prime minister and his colleagues tolerate this because it's not helping them. Shirelli, it's, you know, when they want to talk on housing, I get what they're trying to do and sort of build houses next to transit increase, density, all of these sorts of things. But, you know, you can't build every house that way. Uh, and they will need roads and infrastructure and economic corridors to get to these areas too. And, and so this, it's it, yet another cleanup on this one, right? Yeah, absolutely. And as the others have said, it's it's a completely an unforced error. They don't need to be making them, especially mm -hmm. uh, the Liberals, especially at this point um, where, you know, the writing seems to be on the wall for them as a government. Obviously, things can change. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely. When you, you're talking about housing, you're talking, obviously, people are trying to get away from things like urban sprawl and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But fact remains that people don't all live in the middle of a city and when people want to poke at the liberals and say call them you know Laurentian elites and out of touch and all those other things they can say well you know you're just worried about the people in the urban areas in the middle of the cities who can walk out their door and maybe catch a bus you can't do that everywhere and you need roads to get buses to the also places need roads, I buses think. also need roads I mean and these same I mean in these same comments that, in the same uh, speech remarks that he made um, the other day, he did say things about how electric vehicles aren't going to be, you know, the, the sure. panacea and, sure. and all of these other things. And, and the fact that, you know, adding more roads, he's absolutely right, adding more roads doesn't help traffic congestion. There's tons of studies that show this. But to come out and say it mm -hmm. as he did and to go completely detract from whatever message it is that you're trying to deliver that gives everybody the opportunity opportunity to just disregard it and say, well, these liberals aren't going to build roads and they get to use their favorite word, seems to be their favorite word now is radical. Um, mm. You know, these, this radical minister, the radical left. All crazy of these, is the other word they use. Yeah. They call the crazy carbon <laughs> well, tax minister. And I, I think what's probably especially frustrating about these comments for the government is that they really reinforce that idea that the government is sort of lecturing people about how they live, about them using their cars, about people's kind of regular way of life, without actually connecting to people's real concerns around climate change. So, for example, Gibbo wasn't out there talking about the worries that people have about wildfires coming up or, or anything like that, or about the unseasonably warm winter we're having. He wasn't talking about, he wasn't really putting voters or Canadians at the center of his story. It was this, this strange abstract comment and I think it reinforces some of the most dangerous um, and, and vulnerable uh, types of arguments people make about how the Liberals speak about these things. Yeah, I, I mean look, it, it, I find this all very ironic in a, in a number of ways. A cousin of mine who you know spoke at a parliamentary committee yesterday, he yeah. used to be the leader of the PC party in Newfoundland, and he said climate change was bogus. He's wrong. Uh, and they should be talking about that today, but because the environment minister himself, who should be an proud and strong communicator of why climate change is real and what we need to do to adapt has put another nail into his own party. And iron the irony for me is this government arguably could have some solid, when, when it is said and done, they'll have probably a decent grade on the things they tried to do on the environment. However, because they cannot make Canadians feel comfortable, because they make Canadians feel worried and uncertain by the way they approach communications, they're writing mm. their own ticket 
to demise. Yeah, they've got a, like a, a record on, for example, child poverty reduction. That is the envy of the G7 and a lot of the Western uh, nations. And, you know, it, it's never part of sort of like the focus because there's often mistakes like this. And, and Amanda, like, I want to be fair to Minister Gilbo because he says he was taken out of context. And there was a larger point he was trying to make that, you know, electric vehicles isn't going to be everything. And if we just keep focusing on big highways, we're just going to keep focusing on, you know, creating more cars and that's not going to solve all of our problems. We need to talk about all these other things. We asked for him to come on the show to provide all of that context, and we had Seamus O'Regan responding and answering for what his colleagues had and meant, and the Prime Minister had to do that largely in question period today. So there's this sort of a thing, too, that if it needs to be cleaned up, it kind of needs to be cleaned up actively and directly, doesn't it? Well, and sometimes people, you know, they're they're better at doing one part of the job than another <laughs> part of the job. And I, I have actually True. said on a number of occasions that the party would be better served by having their best communicators out front, especially right now. And, and I think that's true because I think that there isn't a lot of room for error. And I do think that this was just an error. I think that yeah. if you look at con contextually the entirety of his speech, it's certain that wasn't the focus. He wasn't trying to say we're not going to build roads. In fact, today, he said very clearly, we're going to build many roads. We're going to build a lot of roads. We're just not going to be putting the funds into these massive infrastructure highway projects. But it comes down to communications. And communications is key right now. Just, you know, many months away from an election, 12 to 18, whatever we're in right now, away from an election, everything that the government says is highly scrutinized. And putting your best communicators out front or having a lot of message discipline could be the big difference between losing the story of the day or being front and center on it. So, Sherelle, on that, I, I, you know, I, I think they tried to do that with the shuffle and different things. Uh, and, you know, Minister Gilbo uh, ha has been a flashpoint with the Atlantic caucus, obviously, with the Western premiers. But it reminds me of a conversation I had with a, a, a senior liberal who said, uh, why can't Dominic LeBlanc be the minister for everything? <laughs> you know, because this is kind of the challenge they have, that when the political heat is up, he's pretty reliable and steady. And after that, you're rolling the dice sometimes. Yeah, you are rolling the dice. And I mean, Stephen Gibault, we've seen him as has been already alluded to. He's made some mistakes when he was heritage minister. He caused a, you know, a real kerfuffle when he went on an interview and, and intimated. He said, you know, he was speaking hypotheticals, but it got out of hand that they were going to the government was going to regulate and and license news outlets. And then they, that had to be all walked back. And next thing you know, you know, he's gone from heritage. But hey, here's environment. I don't know if that was maybe they shouldn't have necessarily handed him him this this gift that he's so clearly wanted given his background um, and he's it's it's a file he's passionate about but passion can't get you everywhere especially when you're in government and you have to make certain decisions that aren't necessarily going to align with you know where your or maybe your own personal views and boundaries are Jordan I'm just like looking ahead to the uh, election campaign and uh, I see Ken McDonald in attack ads I see Stephen Gilbo in attack ads that the conservatives are building with liberal provided clips, you know, in, in very clear ways. I mean, how do they deal with this? Uh, or, or is are we at a point where the sunk cost is just uh, too big to recover? Well, I think part of this is about having real conversations in caucus about unforced errors. And, mm -hmm. and it's not that these can all be avoided, but some of them can be avoided. Some of the stuff is a little bit foreseeable. And that that's not just on the ministers, that's also on staff, that's on the central communications team to just make sure that they're taking that time, they're putting that extra lens on things. You can prevent, like, only, only ministers and their teams can prevent forest fires here, basically. <laughs> uh, so they should be putting some of that work <laughs> In now, um, but it is true that the, these things they're going to stick around. Okay, uh, unfortunately, you can't stick around because we're out of time. We got to say goodbye. Thank you so much to the power panel: Sherelle Evelyn, Jordan Likeness, Tim Powers, and Amanda Alvero.